Mwana ntombi ya batemu. Mwana, 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 nawe mtembi, nawe ba uchacho. Baya kwa wazibu kumtembu kwa wazibu kwa wazibu. Haya ni baazi, salo. Inuwa wabwala imise benzi koto. Hey, good morning, and how are you? We are fine, Che. I hope other okay. members will speak to uh, us. We'll do a roll call so that we move and move and leave. Okay, Shano. Um, uh, good morning, uh, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, um, members. Uh, good morning, members of the public that are with us today. Uh, Chairperson, I wish to confirm the following members that are with us. Uh, I have you, Member Kungubele, as the chairperson of this committee. I have Member Abrams with us. I have Member Stock. I have Member Iris. I have Member Mvana. I have Member Manganye. I have Member Fanda Merve. I have, yeah, that's all the members that are with us for now. Uh, I don't know, Fungila, if you have anyone that have missed out. And Honorable Operman. Thank you very much. And Honorable Operman Chair, we are a quorum in this meeting. We can officially uh, continue with proceedings of today. Thank you very much. Viva, viva Cora. Viva yes. Cora. Uh, Apologies. Can you put the agenda on the screen? Okay, Chair. What is this behind the tree? What are you going to do with it? <laughs> Use it to the benefit of us. <laughs> Leave my house alone. All I remember is there is the agenda. To, to Only two items, technical presentation and APP, and that's it. We close. And I appeal we keep it like that. Mvana, <laughs> chair. Yes, Honorable Mvana. Chair, the pagamis in Dobasia, and I will move on to Loba. That don't was in Pumagolo. Any second? A second chair, Alexandra. Morning. Hi, chair, chair Alexandra. Any apologies, Linda? Uh, yes, chairperson. I have a just few apologies. Uh, yeah. Firstly, uh, we have yeah. our standing apology yeah. from um, member Kwenya, who's not well. Hey, Another apology is from is member your, students. Um, she attended a mini plenary, uh, which clashes with the time of this meeting. We have another apology from member Pinanguru. She has a doctor's appointment shown with us. Another apology is from the minister. She is attending to an urgent family matter. Another one is from the deputy minister. She is also have private commitments and then the place she is at, she won't be able to connect. Thanks very much. Uh, on the day that we are flying, who's on that day? Can you mute everybody, Linda? What? Can you unmute yourself, Chair? I've muted. I've muted everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is the department here? Yes, good morning, Chair. Uh, the department is here. Take the platform, sir. Thank you very much and good morning, honorable members, Chairperson. Maybe let me welcome you, Acting DG, with your team. Uh, everyone else, otherwise it's not courteous not to do that. I hope you guys are fine. As you still have escaped uh, the virus so far. Uh, yes. Over to you, ATG. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, we now feel very welcome. 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Um, so yeah, we, 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 we are going to present two specific aspects. One on the ECD clauses um, um, as per request of the committee. And then of course, uh, the elements around the technical team. We will be very short chair um, uh, in doing so. We'll start with the technical te team elements. Let me um, start by rendering an apology chair that they are about two slides or slow um, that um, because of developments in the past few days, including yesterday and so on, we're not able to share them through, but we will talk to them. Those specifically relate to a work around the task team. So we would like to apologize in advance for those two slides um, that uh, we had not sent through to the committee. I think it's about two or three, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. True. It relates specifically to issues around the, the, the committee. Okay, so I will, I will flag the presentation and I'll ask Luanda to lead us uh, in the presentation, please. Um, if we can get an indication whether you can now see the presentation, I've just flagged it. Okay, there we are. You are seeing yourself, but you are not seeing anything yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. There we are. Is that better? Yeah. I can see something coming now. Right. Okay, Leander, please go ahead. Okay. Good morning, honorable chair, honorable members. And Sorry, I, I let me apologize here. I forgot to introduce the team that I'm with here. Advocate Leander, Advocate Dada, Isabella. Um, is, is Leander is Leander the surname? Uh, Leander is the name. I'm sure she says the surname. <laughs> um, <laughs> so who's our chair? Thank you very much, chair. <laughs> Good morning, honorable chair and honorable members and colleagues. Uh, as has been indicated, the purpose for the presentation is to brief the committee about the progress made in addressing the early childhood development related clauses of the Children's Amendment Bill. The scope of the work that has been done and timelines within which the bill is expected to be back to parliament. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, you will recall, Honorable Chair, that during the previous engagement uh, with the department, the Portfolio Committee uh, raised a suggestion that uh, the logical possibility of removing all ECD clauses would be advisable and deal with the bill, uh, with the clauses in the second uh, amendment bill as envisaged. So the department requested to give time to consult regarding the logical approach uh, suggested by the chairperson and revert to the committee at a later stage as we hereby do uh, today. Uh, in terms of the correspondence that we received from your good office, honorable chair, uh, the request was to look at the terms of reference for the technical uh, team that has been suggested and the terms of reference for the proposed technical team relate to the development of the Children's Second Amendment Bill, uh, which will solely focus on ECT clauses. It must be indicated in this regard that uh, initially we were to focus on the clauses that were rejected or that were contested uh, by uh, SALGA and rejected by Parliament. And ever since uh, the uh, alarm has been raised during the public hearings. We will be focusing now on the entire uh, ECD uh, clauses in the bill. Uh, the composition of this uh, technical team, uh, Honorable Chair, is proposed that uh, it be made of uh, the legal representatives from DSD, uh, SALGA, uh, Basic Education, and Parliament. Parliament, because uh, this is a second uh, amendment bill, which is uh, uh, being split from the original bill that is before your good selves. So it is uh, ideal that under the circumstances that uh, Parliament and parliamentary legal advisors uh, will be uh, greatly involved. It is also advisable that policymakers from the said departments also form a uh, part of the technical team as well as parliamentary legislative drafting team as this is a second uh, uh, amendment bill. The ECD sector representation should also be part of the technical team as uh, they are the custodians of this particular uh, uh, request at the end of the day. 
the scope of work, Honorable Chair, that this uh, technical team will be focusing on uh, will be to develop the second amendment bill uh, and, uh, with draft, uh, which draft has already been uh, developed by the Department of Social Development, taking into account that we should only be covering uh, the ECD clauses in the current bill and later factor in the proposed amendments by the ECD sector, Department of Education, and SALGA, where uh, reasonable, practicable. Uh, further than that, Honorable Chair, the consultation, the department has uh, consulted with various uh, parties that are affected in this regard. And the first consultation was with the Department of Basic Education. Uh, the basic education department was consulted because eventually uh, it will be the one that will be taking over the processing of the second amendment bill due to the fact that uh, the, uh, there is a transfer that is pending uh, in terms of section 97 of the constitution that is transfer of ECD to DBE. So it is um, uh, practical therefore for the department of Edu basic education to be the ones uh, who will be leading the process uh, moving forward. Uh, it must also be taken into account, Honorable Chair, that the Department of Basic Education, when it was consulted, uh, supported the view that all amendments relating to ECD must be in the proposed Second Amendment Bill and be processed as such. Uh, this was further confirmed during the public hearings uh, last week by uh, Dr. Kotze of the Department of Basic Education and also indicated that they were also willing uh, to take over uh, the, the, the bill. Uh, consultation uh, uh, was further made with the uh, South African Local Government uh, Association, uh, SALGA in short, uh, on the 10th of May and shared the draft second amendment bill uh, with a view to solicit comments from them and also highlighting uh, to them that uh, further engagements regarding uh, the bill will be with the Department of Basic Education as they are the future uh, uh, custodians of uh, this piece of legislation. And the processing of the bill will also be moving uh, forward as per section 97 of the constitution as the transfer is, is imminent, taking into account that both ministers have already signed uh, the uh, proclamations, uh, which will then be signed by uh, the PSA minister and the president uh, shortly. So the department has since communicated the latest regarding this matter with SALGA and provided them with the latest draft uh, uh, second amendment bill. Uh, further than that, honorable chair, there was also a consultation with ECDA representatives uh, uh, that is the ECD sector representatives. Uh, after receipt of numerous letters from the ECD sector being concerned about the rejection of the ECD clauses uh, from the bill, the department took an initiative to meet with the sector to clarify the issues that were uh, uh, not clear around the rejection of the clauses. And uh, the ECD sector uh, also proposed that as has been uh, the case with the public hearings as well, uh, propose that all the ECD clauses go to uh, the second amendment bill and that the second amendment bill be processed as speedily as possible by the relevant uh, committee. Uh, we were also asked to look at the timelines for the development of the second amendment bill we must indicate, Honorable Chair, that the department has already developed a draft second amendment bill uh, uh, and consulted uh, uh, with DBE, as DBE will be taking the process moving forward, uh, consulted with the ECD sector to bring it abreast of the developments and consulted with SALGA and the ECD sector on, um, that is with SALGA on Monday, uh, the 10th of May and the ECD sector. We must also indicate, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, that since TBE has agreed to take over the processing of the Children's Second Amendment Bill, DBE will be better placed to respond to uh, the issues of timelines moving forward uh, from today. That is for the processing of the Second Amendment Bill. Uh, it must uh, 
be noted, Honorable Chair, that as a way forward, the, it is the view of the department that the portfolio committee takes note of the progress made in establishing the technical task team, uh, the composition thereof, uh, the scope of work that has been done has been, has been presented, and also request that uh, the Department of uh, Basic Education uh, provide timelines within which the Second Amendment Bill is expected to be back uh, to Parliament. That is all for today, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. I thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, 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 do you want to say something? Uh, no, no, I just wanted to say, Chair, we, 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 we have also, uh, yeah. apart from meeting with Salga, have also been engaging regularly and writing to them as well, um, uh, including with uh, basic education. So we are now all on the same track, and I think we are all of the same thinking, um, which I think is very useful. Thank you very much. And has the Department of Basic Education given you their timeline? No, uh, not yet, Chair. We will. I will be meeting with the DG in the in the next, I think, week and a half or so, um, and it's one of the issues that I'll be raising with them. Uh, but I can. I am sure that I can. We can try and get that as sooner rather than later. Yeah, we'll engage with them. Uh, do you know where? Okay, maybe let me not ask you this one because we still need that joint. Uh, yes. Uh, workshop between two portfolio committees, between two departments and the portfolio committees with regard to uh, attaching mm -hmm. significance to the significance of this migration project. Because this, 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 this migration is not migration for migration. It's yes. migration to ensure that quality service to the children is received in a quality way. So it's important to shorten migration so that the purpose of migration is served as urgent as possible. Um, you are going to meet DPE, and I'm not sure to which extent DPE is following the public hearings to the extent of the urgency of the Second Amendment Bill. Before the members, can you make a comment on that? Yes, Chair. Um, we know that uh, they have been attending the, the, the consultations. Um, so, so we are pretty confident that um, we, are, we, are on the, we are on the same track and they also understand the urgency uh, of the matter. Mm -hmm. Uganda? And further than that, Honorable Chair, they, they also made a presentation regarding the ECD clauses themselves. That is uh, Dr. Kotze of uh, the Department of Basic Education and have also accepted the fact that they will be inheriting uh, the Second Amendment Bill. But it has also been our uh, plea, Honorable Chair, uh, to, to your good selves to say uh, it, 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 would be, it would have much weight if it comes from your office uh, to give a directive uh, to the Department of Basic Education with regard to the timelines, not us as a department asking timelines yeah. from them. Absolutely. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Yeah. Okay. No, I think I understand that. Uh, honorable members, you remember we when we rejected, although this legal term rejected in Chujisa, <laughs> it misrepresents what we are trying to do because we are not rejecting, <laughs> but we are just saying they should be attended to in a different process. Mm. Now, because mm. we're not going to attend to them here, we call them, we are saying they are rejected. And when you meet people that you, you rejected the clauses, <laughs> that's so misunderstood, but that's your language anyway. Uh, all of the members, we, we, remember we said, as we were rejecting these clauses, <laughs> so, that we can, so that we can focus, we said we're not going to be comfortable until the department comes back to us. They give us an idea, what is the way forward? especially now having listened to stakeholders on the agency of the Second Amendment Bill. Here is what they are tabling before us. Uh, your comments, your clarity second question, and your critique, so that we, 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 uh, we, in principle, we are not against being part of the championship of the Second Amendment Bill because the issue of the children 
uh, for the social development can never be out of our table from this point of psychosocial aspect and a number of social so, so, psychosocial elements and related issues. So it can never be out of our table. So it, it, the, the state of the children, the fact that we are leading the children's amendment bill, it means mainly the, 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 the protection of children. The principal department is this, but from the point of ECD, the principal mandated department is the Department of Basic Education. But from the bigger scheme of things, we've got a huge responsibility to be to, 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 to demonstrate our care and our interest in the state of the children across the board. But here is the presentation, honorable members. I want to hear your comments. Uh, I can only see mm -hmm. Honorable Alexander, Honorable Fandamave, Honorable Aris, going, going, Honorable Stock, going, uh, shoot, Honorable Alexander. Um, thank you, Chairperson, and thank you to the department. I'm not too sure if I'm the only person that did not see the presentation um, on the screen. I mean, it showed that the acting DG was sharing his screen, but the presentation didn't come up. So therefore, I, I, I didn't see it myself. <laughs> so therefore, we missed those two slides that were the extra slides. And if, mm. if I heard the acting DG correct, that extra slide had the composition of the technical team. So I just would like to ask if, if Linton can just maybe read um, the list of who's all on that um, technical team to us, um, please. And then also chairperson, um, if at some point very soon, we definitely need that um, date for the joint committee. Thank you. Oh, there we can see it Thank now. Thank you very much. Uh, it, no, they will come at the end. Let's let's see the comments of other members first. Uh, Honorable Panamava. Thank you, Chair. Um, no, uh, I'll be very brief. I think we were all very interested to hear uh, some time frames today. But of course, it is understandable that the process is now with the Department of, of Education. So we, we just, you know, I think we take note of the presentation, but I think all of us really deem this process to be very urgent. I think the ECD sector is in crisis. So um, like the Honorable Abram said, uh, we need to have that joint mm -hmm. workshop uh, sooner than later. And then furthermore, just to ask your office to then engage with the Department of Education to get us some uh, preliminary time frames as to how long this process will take. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Aris. Morning, Chair. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Linton and your team. Um, I'm very grateful, specifically with for the engagement with with the Salga. You know, because there was a number of challenges that the ECDs in this past days did. All of them, you know, experienced the same challenges, and and it is really painful because it's such a important sector in important sector you know and but not only that she um i think really as the, i can't uh, like the other previous speakers were saying that we really need that uh, you know um engagement with dbe you know to fast track this process thank you thank you honorable uh honorable masamu Oh, there was no honorable person. Sorry. How did I? <laughs> honorable Dikham? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, let me also join my colleagues in uh, echoing the almost similar sentiments about the, uh, the issues that is still outstanding or before us as the portfolio committee around the meeting the meeting that was supposed to take place between ourselves and the uh, Department of Basic Education. 
But on the other issues, I think I was covered by Honorable Alexander and Honorable uh, Fandel Mer uh, around the importance of that meeting between the two departments taking place. I also just wanted to add my voice into that. Uh, but I also need to indicate that I did not see the two, present, the two slides. It was also loading on my side. Uh, I think it's the issue that was raised by Honorable Alexander. But I see now that the 18 DG has put them before us, uh, which we are going to actually take note. But I also want to appreciate also Honorable Chairperson, the good work uh, that has been unfolding between the two departments, basic education, around this pertinent issue before the portfolio committee, uh, which is on the ECD migration. Otherwise, Honorable Chairperson, I'm quite happy about the process. And then uh, I actually take note of the work that has been done. I'm very much Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Stock. Uh, uh, Linton, can you take us through the slides? Okay, Chair. I'm not sure if you can see it now. Not yet. Okay. Um, it's showing. Okay. Um, I'm sure that it's visible now, honorable members. Something is coming, yes. I can see something on my side. Okay. So, so um, yeah, we, 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 we will share the slides as well right now with the secretariat. Um, so this is the two slides. Uh, Leanda, you can talk to us in terms of the composition of the task team um, and the terms of reference. Okay. Uh, Th thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, the slide relates to the terms of reference and uh, the composition. That is the two slides uh, the DG was referring to. And we were indicating that uh, the terms of reference for the proposed technical task team relates to the development of the Children's uh, Second Amendment Bill, uh, which will solely focus on ECD clauses. And this team will have to meet on a regular basis in order to ensure the speedy uh, 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 processing of the issues affecting ECD, as has been indicated during the public hearings. And we also said uh, this team, uh, it is proposed that it be uh, um, uh, made up of uh, legal representatives from the Department of Social Development uh, from the drafting side. Uh, that is SALGA, uh, Basic Education, and Parliament. And we indicated that uh, Parliament, uh, in the sense that you also need the services of the state law advisors within Parliament, since this is a Second Amendment bill, solely processed from Parliament itself. So it is also advis uh, advisable that policymakers uh, who will be able to articulate the policy positions around this uh, uh, the issues that were raised by um, uh, the stakeholders uh, over the past week and uh, up until yesterday. Uh, it is advisable that policymakers from the said departments also form part of the technical task team, uh, as, as uh, indicated the parliamentary uh, trust drafting team. So the ECD sector, it would also be Sorry, advised... sorry Leander. Policymakers, you mean the bureaucrats who specialize in policy? Uh, that the uh, line function, yes. the line, line function, the line function. Okay, yes. All right. okay. Th thanks, Honorable Chair. Uh, we also indicated, Honorable Chair, that the ECD sector uh, it, it will also be uh, part of uh, the representation in this technical task team. It is important to have uh, them uh, on, on board because uh, of the principle of. Uh, participatory democracy, honorable chair, nothing about us without us. Uh, so uh, that is how we feel uh, the, the composition should be. But we still stand to be advised, honorable chair, by your good selves uh, in the context of uh, processing the second amendment bill it's, itself as to who else could be in that. Yeah, I think one of the things we just need to do amongst ourselves, um, we haven't concluded on it. It's just for, for, for example, to unpack how, what is uh, regularly. So, you know, in our terms of reference, we just need to be clear, you know, once in a week, 
to, uh, you know, twice in a week and so on. So those are logistics on our end that we're still working on at the moment. Mm. This is a question. Thank you very much. Uh, let me, uh, somebody, somebody wants to say something? Uh, no, no, no. It was me, Chair. It was just to appreciate oh. the comments that have been that have come through. I forgot there's another comment I, I wanted to make. I'll, it'll no, come back. My, my understanding, we are closing this matter at that point. That one, the, the relationship between TPE and ourselves at a technical level should continue. And uh, the portfolio committee will write a letter to both the department and the portfolio committee, but our counterpart there is the portfolio committee on the edges of the bill. That will include also reminding ourselves about the agents of the joint uh, workshop. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that's the point. Maybe one, things we can, one other thing we can ask for is that when the technical team gives us the, la the picture in future, some kind of time frames are going to be very useful and encouraging. But however, in the last meeting, honorable members will remember, we have accepted that uh, the developments that are implications of migration make DBE the principally mandated department to take this matter forward. We become a stakeholder of significant importance because uh, broadly the children's uh, situation, we play a key, if not the main role. So later to go there, and uh, even speaking to the chair of the portfolio committee of the TPE, it's also going to be useful. Can, can we, honorable members, leave it at that point that the agency is no longer a, a debated? Whatever interactions we're having, the agency to turn around the state of ECT uh, is not under debate. What's going to count is we must be satisfied by clear processes that demonstrate an intention to take the matter forward. Uh, is that a proper closure, honorable members? Yes, Chair, it is. Yes, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Yeah. Thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, Linton, thank you very much. Uh, today is uh, Wednesday. Okay, fine. It's okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Greet everybody in the okay. department. Uh, One, fine. Sorry, Chair. Yes. Uh, my apologies. Just before um, you, you close, if, if you would allow me, just an important okay. aspect so, I wanted to All right. Yeah. Just one. Uh, you, you spoke about the status uh, of children and the challenges we have in the country around some elements related to that. I just wanted to flag to the committee, you know, um, that uh, we will be having Child Protection Week from the 29th of May till the 5th of June. Um, and um, the entire country will be, um, will be dealing with issues of children. It's, it's that just a week for now, um, intersectorally. Uh, but of course, there are a number of things that we do throughout the year. So we commemorate that or look specifically zoom into these issues just between that week. So I just thought I should make that since we are talking about um, issues related to children in ECT. Thank you. Now, now that ADGs, you have said it, it creates more challenges because <clears throat> all so far, taking into account the hearings we have, released, we have had here, in terms of the department's intervention, assistance to a number of queries and issues raised by the stakeholder on children's matters, the department is not coming across very well. So that children week, whatever name you call it, it will be, it will be, it will, it, it will have value if it can demonstrate that knowing the challenges that are put forward here, concretely during that week, it will be, it will make this, the, it will give weight to the week. If you guys can demonstrate that you know the problem situation of the children to the extent it affects the role of the department, and two, that 
These are the interventions that you are making. Does that make sense? Absolutely, Chair. That's that's very, very useful. Absolutely. Okay. Thank All you right. for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, we are done. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Lindy, well, let's go to the last item. Uh, can hey. the presenter stop sharing, please? Stop sharing, present. <laughs> the next item, Chair, is the consideration and the adoption of the committee report on the APP and budget votes of DSD and its entity. Uh, Yoli is the drafter of that report. Thank you very much, Chair. Does Yoli want to take us through? I've gone through the report. I, I presuppose that members have gone, but maybe Yoli would want to do any highlights, Yoli? Thank you, Chairperson, and good morning to members <coughs> and to my colleagues and uh, everyone else in attendance. Chairperson, can you guide me? Um, do you want me to go through all the report or should I focus on the deliberations and recommendations that we need? Deliberations and recommendations. Okay. Chair, my apologies, Chair. Um, uh, I'm checking whether we may be released. Uh, Don't or... release. This is our report now. You, you, okay. you submitted. We spoke with you. You answered our questions. We are going to give you our report, what our views are. Okay. Uh, you my can assumption... go. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My assumption is that you are happy with us. <laughs> we, 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 will, we will request you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Lindy, can I just share the notes, the, the mm -hmm. slides, the pages uh, that yeah. I made? Can yeah, I host? Yeah, we okay. co-host this. You can. Okay. Can the committee see the pages? Uh, we can. But they are jumping up and down. No, sorry, I was just scrolling up, Chair. Okay. All righty. Uh, I've just um, taken them straight from the from the report, and I just did a little bit of editing uh, just before the meeting. Because maybe my pages are not really uh, the same as what I sent this morning. Tepesin, I started with the deliberations we had with the Office of the Auditor General and the key issues that were raised by the committee. The first one being that the committee really found the presentation very empowering, and it proposed for another section with the AG that would give more comprehensive engagement on the work of the AG, particularly on the review on the status of records and audits on material irregularities. Just to uh, remind the members that the, the office really gave us some gave some time to explain this new concept of the material irregularities. And it always made an example where it had conducted some, some reviews. But most importantly, it, it, it was mentioned that um, SASA was not involved or was not assessed with the previous uh, uh, reviews, but it will be now going forward. So the committee will be looking forward to the results of that assessment in terms of the material irregularities. Then on the status on controls, the committee was concerned that uh, the department had a good performance on oversight and monitoring, while other areas like financial health, financial management, procurement, contract management, and others remained unchanged. It was particularly concerned that the two entities, that is SASA and the NDA, the status and control, also either remained unchanged or regressed, even though the department had a good performance on oversight and monitoring. And in that aspect, uh, Chairperson, the committee really deliberated on the interrelation between the status of control and the fact that the department may have a good performance on monitoring, but not on the other focus areas. Okay, this is just a, a, a point of emphasis that the committee was seriously concerned that the status controls at SASA but either a matter of concern or they needed intervention. If you look at the color coding from the AG. 
And uh, it was particularly concerned that this indicates a very poor performance and the fact that SASA accounts for the bulk of the budget from the departments in terms of transfers. The other point is the committee wanted to know what measures can the, uh, can the AG advise the department to put in place to make sure that audit findings are quickly addressed and the status and control are improved. The AG explained that the Public Finance Management Act has clear regulations on what accounting officers have to do to prevent irregular expenditure and what actions should be taken. It is therefore the responsibility of the accounting officer to identify the irregularities even before the AG does. <clears throat> then the, the, this is a in the form of a question. Uh, the committee also wanted to know what could be the causes of poor performance and non-compliance to legislation and regulations, particularly in the areas of supply and chain management. Could it be a lack of capacity, lack of training, high, ten, high staff turnover, or a case of deliberately, deliberately ignoring the rule? Uh, this, this question was not really uh, addressed uh, by adequately from the from the AG's office, unless maybe the members manage to, to, to get some uh, input from the AG, and may, and some, maybe they yeah, can be advised. Okay, the other one, Chair, um, issue of concern was that the, the department and SASA are struggling to recover debt owed. The last one, in terms of the, the deliberations with the AG, the committee noted with concern the identified discrepancies in the identity, identity, not identified, identity numbers provided by SAPO to the ones that are in SASA payment system. It wanted to know if this meant that ineligible people, people were paid or more people were added into the system. Then the AG explained that this means that SASA has to ensure that ID numbers from SASA from SAPO are verified before payments are made. This was as far as the deliberation the committee had with the Office of the AG Chair. May I pause and see if, what, if members have uh, input? Thank you. Thank you. There is our the report of our deliberations, honorable members. The main intention now is for this report to be adopted and the department producing a plan of action on how to deal with these matters. But before I get there, I want to hear honorable members. This is, this is for adoption, to be honest with you. I just want to check if members have any comments. Honorable Alexander, going. Honorable Alexander? Um, th thank you, Chairperson. There's just two points in the entire report. Um, that that I don't know if it's going to come in here, but I think that it maybe should. And that was the committee's concern over the fact that the top up grant for the child support grant um, concerns over where the budget is for that top up grant. So if if, if it can come into this report, and then the second one, um, I think we can also you, can you can you refresh our minds on the top up grant. So remember, there needs to the, the, what we're busy with, um, chairperson, the comprehensive legal solution. The point that um, oh, we are making the social oh, assistance act. That uh, the social assistance amendment bill is not being supported financially. Correct, chairperson. That's Thank you very point. much. That's the second point. And the second point, um, also, we express concern over the cutting of SASA's budget over the next few years. I mean, next okay. this financial year, it's 641 million. And although it says, yes, it's predominantly from wages and employees compens compensation, but you know, there is a high vacancy rate at SASA and how that high vacancy rate affects service delivery is also a concern. Thank you, Chair. Those are, those are perfect points. Uh, Honorable Aris. Thank you, Chair. I think mine is just the issue on um, the budget for the social workers, because um, as we have a shortage of that um, social workers, and then also I think we did raise the issue of the SASA system that need to be looked at, Chair. Thank you. 
did I see any other hand? No. Yes, Jay. Oh, Liz. I'm sorry, Jay. Um, I also made some points, which I don't know whether you would uh, but, accept uh, them or not. Honourable Second. Put your hand. Mine. <laughs> is that not Honorable Sega? Honorable Sega is not in today, Chair. But who is speaking? Is that Honorable Fanamere? Fanamere. It's me, Chair. Chair. Yes. Oh, no, no. Take the, no, take the podium. My apologies. I thought it was somebody else. Sorry. Proceed. Sorry. Sorry. My apologies, Chairperson. I also made a couple of notes, which I'm just going to read, and then Chairperson can decide. Uh, whether I'm out of order or not. But I thought looking at the document, there was a discussion around the issues of um, the non-payment, late payment, or the cuts of subsidies uh, to, to NPOs and NGOs. So I, su I suggested that the minister must, as a matter of urgency, resolve the non-payment, late payment, or subsidy cuts to NPOs and NGOs who provide vital services on behalf of the state. I also thought the issue of the debt that's not being recovered is, is quite a big issue. So I thought we must make a point to say well, what is that? the, the um, owing monies, the outstanding monies that the department is not recovering. And it's okay. So I thought we must say, have a point on that to say the minister must ensure that all avenues are explored to ensure debt owed to the department and its entities are recovered. Um, and then as this similar to the previous speakers, I thought we should have a point that the minister should ensure the implementation of the 2018 cabinet resolution on the employment of social workers, um, that the minister should, as a matter of urgency, ensure that she finalizes a budget allocation with Treasury for the CGE top-up grant. Um, and then with SASA, I thought that we should make the point that the minister must ensure that SASA clamps down harshly and effectively on fraud and corruption within the entity, in particular as it pertains to fraudulent activities by its own officials. And that was my last point, because I do feel all of these have got budget implications, cheapers, and if we do not collect debt, if we do not clamp down on fraudulent activities, then, you know, our budget is bleeding. So those were some of my add-ons. Uh, I thought I think I think most of the issues you have said are not just yours. Are co should be committee concerns, but my re my uh, proposal would be on the NPO because there was no document of evidence. Not that that thing on a proof and a member is not there. Is it not better to say can the department investigate that and give us a report on what is it going to do it? Agreed, Chairperson. Yes. Thank you very much. Because I'm, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid when we're not discussing any evidence-based document, not that that thing is not there, but at least if we say to them, can you investigate that matter and tell us how you're going to handle it and so on. Generally, unless uh, the, the additions of the members seems to be in order, but I don't know if other members have got any different views. Da, 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 da. It means... Based on those edition, uh, can anyone propose for the adoption of the report and the second? Not yet, Chair. Who is that? Yolisa. Yes, Yoli? No, Chair. Those, those deliberations were with the office of the AG. There are still deliberations between the department and the committee, SASA and the NDA. Which, which deliberations? <laughs> If you remember, Chair, we had meetings, two-day meetings. The first meeting yeah. was with the AG and DST. Mm. So I separated the deliberations the committee had with the AG and with SASA, DST, and um, NDA. So we, I have different sets of deliberations for each engagement. Am I correct that this report takes care of both of the department and the entities? You are correct, Chairperson. Do you have any concern if members want to put all those to be reflected in this report? No, I don't, Chair. I was actually going to ask if Honorable Fanamera can forward me the document that she does. No problem. No, no. Yes. I, no, I, 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 it's good that you have clarified that, but at the end of the day, I think the committee wants to have a comprehensive APP budgetary, PA, triple R thing, so that we address all the 
key issues that the department is supposed to respond on. So if you don't have a problem with that, then we are covered. We are saying that I'm, 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 I'm proposing the adoption of the report uh, subject to those amendments. Honorable members, any, any proposal? I will move for the adoption, Chairperson. Honorable Fanamadla. Yes, any seconder? I will second Chairperson Alexander Abrams. Uh, any contra review? We are done. Thank you very much. Uh, anything else? Uh, Lindwe? No, Chair, there, um, there are no other matters for discussion um, for today's Thank meeting. Thank you. We, we don't have to resist uh, going, uh, getting out of the, logging out if time for doing so is, has arrived. And uh, at that point, thank you, honorable members. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Keep thank safe. You. Bye. Bye. I'm going to end the meeting for everyone. Thank you.